On today's episode, we're talking about wild cards, players that could go one way or they could go another. We each bring two to the table as well as some best ball advice. Make sure you stick around for the entire show. Subscribe, leave us some comments about your favorite wild cards, and enjoy. Great Scott! If my calculations are correct, you are listening to this before your fantasy football drafts have taken place. I have been to the future, and those that follow the advice from the fantasy footballer's ultimate draft kit had a spectacular season and with certain many victories. It's almost as if Biff had given each of them a copy of Greatest Sports Almanac. I'd highly recommend heading over to www.ultimatedraftkit.com without any further delay. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, June 8th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Happy to have you with us. Great episode for you today. The best. I guess that's kind of TBD, but probably the best. Probably, uh, probably our best. I would say an episode today has a wide range of outcomes, Andy. Mm, it's kind we'll of keep, wild. We'll keep you on your toes. Yeah. Maybe it'll be bad. You'll have to listen to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Got him hooked now. <laughs> Is today's episode good or not? Stay tuned to find out. <laughs> Um, so far, so good, Mike. Uh, we're doing well. You All can right. follow the show. <laughs> still, <laughs> still going okay. Yeah. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. Follow Jason at Jason FFL. I'm adding at Andy Holloway. And uh, we're on Instagram, YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Uh, we are entering the part of the offseason where we get to enjoy some like very – kind of mediocre highlight videos that are made into pretty much the best thing we've ever seen because we're so hungry for football. Oh, we thirsty boys. I watched Garrett Wilson catch a touchdown from Aaron Rodgers in practice. Which yeah, but it was awesome. Was it for you? Was it <laughs> yeah, the, of oh, course okay. it was. Because you had Garrett Wilson on his team. Got he, it. Yeah, he's on my dinosaur squad, and it's Garrett Wilson running uh, just just a straight line, but he's turned around the whole time. Yeah, yeah. And then it was it's the classic... Aaron Rodgers' back shoulder, so Garrett Wilson knows exactly when to jump and do a spinning 360 touchdown grab. Did you ever see any of the highlights? 20, 20 touchdowns for Garrett Wilson this year. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Did uh, Same amount as Allen Robinson last year after those hype videos. Uh, did I we remember have, the same play. Did I we think get it was the video? It was very was, Oh, similar. we got videos. Oh, we Mike. did? He dominated this time of year. No, no, no. I know he dominated. And we had with videos. videos. With videos. Oh. Just mossing dudes. And they were... That exact same play. It was play. that play. Yeah, hundred percent. I remember it. Yeah, he but was it wasn't really Aaron Rodgers, so no. I wouldn't. I wasn't. No, I, I look was excited. Point proven. <laughs> point proven. It is. I saw Chica Conquo with a nice touchdown catch from Ryan Tannehill. I I'm starting to believe that all of these quarterbacks and receivers are catching passes and throwing balls, and I mean, uh, you practice know, is makes perfect. Inc incredible ones. Yeah. What's great is, you know, you, you, you go on your Twitter timeline, you see all these wonderful videos, you know, they're just showing the highlights and then you keep scrolling and you come across Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask <laughs> over and over and, and it's over. their highlights. And I hope it's not their highlights because <laughs> it is just, well, you're, I'm mean, just missing guys on against air. Uh, did you guys see the video that J.J. Watt came out with speaking to? I did not. You did not? Neither no, of you did? No. He had a I, – I thought it was a wonderfully well-spoken video talking about what happens now with attendance to every single practice, OTA, camp, video on your phone. Every player is being recorded at all times. And his point was like, please, for the love of God, 
let these players develop. He says he knows firsthand from being in camp that there will be defensive ends that want to try a new move, which is something you should do to get better. Yeah. But they won't try it because if they get blocked for three or four times in a row in practice, they will read about it on social media and how they are they got blocked, they look terrible, they don't know what they're doing. And he's like, this is how players get good. They try new things, and this is the time to try them. He's like, let them develop. It sounds to me like they should just try better new moves, you know? Yeah. Succeed with them. Huh? I mean, then this, they'll write about that. Not every not every person is like this show where we have everything so refined. Now, uh, that's a good point. That is true, but I also I remember uh, the media talking to Zach Wilson, and they were asking about his <laughs> interceptions. Yeah. And he's like, hey, man, this is this is where you – this is where you find out, you know, like because I agree with that. That you should at practice, you need to take chances on things because it is practice. And Zach Wilson did, and it translated to where Zach Wilson is right now, which is on the bench. Look, I'm not saying it works out for everybody. Well, yeah, but the i i do I do believe this idea because we we get on here, all we have is the past. We do not have the future. We can only talk about what a player has done. And we act like these players cannot improve, get better, do things. Like you see them take the step forward that are not predicted. Players come out and they become much, much better than we expected them to be. Sure. Devontae Adams. Yes. Devontae Adams. Yeah. And it's like we all have kids. They go to practice. <laughs> we watch them from year to year how much better they get as children. They're not superstar athletes that have these weight rooms and, and coaching staffs and diets and nutritionists and like – the idea that a player that was kind of pretty good can't become great or a player that's not that good can't break out is a silly notion. Like, yeah. I think in fantasy we should take more – we should look at those opportunities and maybe recognize some more of those players that are going to make those strides. We we talk about what, post-hype sleepers? What mm -hmm. are they? That's what happens. Yeah. Um, all right. A couple things at the top before we get into a great quick question. Uh, we've got some news to talk about, and then we've got our – a wild card players on today's show that we're going to dig into. But two things at the top. Number one, the Ultimate Draft Kit available right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. Um, you're going to see all of our rankings, projections, sleepers, breakouts, player profile videos, tons of tools, resources for you. It's awesome. Check it out. Number two, the Dynasty Podcast. Yeah. New episode released yesterday. It's about Dynasty trade targets. If you're like, what is that thing you're talking about? Well, because you're joining us maybe for the first time this year, we launched the Dynasty Podcast. It's once a week. Features uh, Kyle Borgannoni, Matthew Betts, and generally one of the two guys sitting across from me, Mike and Jason. Yep. I was I was on this uh, this this recent episode we did. We talked about trade targets, players who we think are, you know, of course, undervalued because that's kind of what Dynasty is. But we also had a really good conversation about just, just trading – in general of like giving tips and uh you know you know a lot of really good insights there from myself oh, okay. and of course good, good. uh Borg and Betts they they do a good job as well <laughs> they were okay yeah i like they how were, i was they are there i like how i was i was really I was selling. I thought I was yeah. doing a good job. Uh -huh. Go listen. It's it's free. It's once a week. It's a I, dynasty show. And I closed. Mike took, Read you. <laughs> loud and clear. Mike took it over to comment on his performance yeah. on the show. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. It was. Thank I, you, Yeah, Jason. I mean, oh, look, great. I've listened, yeah. and usually when uh, Mike or myself on, the, on those podcasts, when we were speaking, it's really good. It's fantastic. It's so good. Anyways, Andy, what were you saying? Uh, that's it. I'm going to leave it there. But one more thing, Megala show. We're live in LA end of August. If you haven't heard about that ballerslive.com, there are a few tickets remaining. You want to come watch the show live August 26th, the palace theater in LA. Come check it out. You will not regret it. All right. Quick question of the day. This one comes in from Chris over on Twitter. Hey ballers. Quick question from Canada. Oh, bonjour. Hey, stay safe. My friend. So Canada is on fire. That on is, fire. Canada is on fire. But all I've heard about is the way that the American countries are receiving the smoke. Well, because are, is there smoke up there too, or did they send it all south? They're, they got big, big, big billows, big and, manual fans. Hmm. I mean, all we care about is how does it affect America. But really, stay safe up there. 
Sounds insane. Here, here's the, he's indoors and he's asking this question. It's got the air filter on. How much do you guys value ADP, which is average draft position, in your draft decisions? Because we have become a, a an ADP driven off season mm-hmm. culture in fantasy. Where do players move around and where should they go? And how much do you factor that into your draft decisions when it comes to home leagues? things like that uh, I factor in quite a bit um, uh, you know I'm never going to reach more than a full round if you're at the turn if you're at, you know the the one or the 12 spot and you're waiting 24 picks I'll reach a little bit further but for the most part in the first five or six seven rounds um, I'm going to try to stick within my tiers of players I like uh, which are totally separate from ADP, but within ADP so that I know when to grab value, who's going to make it back to me. If you if you're ignoring ADP, I think you're making a mistake. Can you can you go rewind for a second and explain what you meant what you meant by just so I understand it, what did you mean by within ADP without ADP? I'm I'm using so I'll look at the tiers like, you know, the when I'm drafting I got the ultimate draft kit and I look at our tiers and I will Keep in mind that I'm not going to take someone just because they're at the very top of my list um, of who's available. If I know that their average draft position is two rounds later, I'm going to wait a, a round right. and grab them at that point. And and there's been enough, especially over the last four or five years, I think we as an industry have gotten um, very smart. Um, and ADP has been a pretty accurate predictor of future success generally speaking uh, you know we we know what we're talking about now in the later rounds you know if i'm round nine and this guy's a round 11 pick i i want the guys i want at the end of drafts and then i kind of throw it more out of the window yeah the adp is incredibly important because it's it's the market and that's when you're in the draft that's what you're playing. You're you're playing the market, saying I know things better than other people do, and and the ADP is saying this is what everyone, not everyone, but of course, but just a ge- a generalized consensus. This is the value of this player, and what is the true value of of drafting a player? Because it's not just the selection of that player. It's who did I not pick? That also has to factor in when I'm at the end of the first round. It's so ADP is incredibly uh, important for for actually knowing what is the value the true value of of a pick yeah i think i think it can be complicated when it comes to obviously there's an adp for sleeper for yahoo for espn yeah um if you're drafting on platform that adp is being shown publicly because the player rankings are going to be in order of, of how they've been drafted so it's going to be something you can use to your advantage when you're on platform in a live draft um, I will say this. I mean, we've we've been in uh, 16 years, I think, now in our main league. We get surprised every single year. I of mean, course, the, yes. the first two rounds we get heavily surprised. So it can be one of those areas where, um, you know, I, I think we've all probably gone, oh, my gosh, like I thought I could get that guy around later. I thought I could – you know, those are the gambles that you take. I think the big thing is it's the data point that you factor into your, your kind of yes. master plan. But don't let it um, don't let it give you a false sense of security, especially fourth, fifth, sixth round and later. That oh my gosh, I can't take. You know, I think Justin Herbert's way better than I think he is than Lamar Jackson. So I'm just going to wait because ADP says I'm going to guarantee get him in the sixth round. I mean, that doesn't always play out that way. Yeah, and realize you are playing a game that is everything is probability. And ADP can help you make an informed decision or take a take a risk, an informed risk, because I know that this player is eight picks behind on ADP. My next pick is in four picks because I'm close to the turn. I know that the probability, the risk probability of this player making it back to me, it's it's a high percentage chance that that player will drop to me, so I don't have to pick to them and give up this other player that I want to pick. It's, it's funny, though, because if you are really convicted about a player, Jason, mm-hmm. that you love, if you take him, there you're happy. In the moment, yeah. But 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 you're also happy later. 
because you don't know if he would have gotten back to you. And I'm not, I'm not trying to make an argument on the other side of just throwing it out the window at all. I'm just thinking logically, like, if you pass in this one spot, you are taking a, a, a measured risk, and the only possible outcomes are you're happy or you could be really disappointed. Well, and that's why when we... If you love the player. Yeah, th that's exactly why we're talking about it, it makes a big difference whether you're doing this in the second or third round versus doing this in the eighth or ninth round because of what you're giving up. Because if there's a chance that I... The difference between a second-round player versus a third-round player is pretty drastic. The difference between a third-round player versus a fourth-round player is pretty drastic. So if I'm reaching to grab a player that I'm, I might be able to get next time, it's usually more worth the ADP risk to play the game because you're going to add a more impressive piece at those earlier rounds uh you know to to hopefully pair with the guy you get closer to exactly ADP. news and notes from around the league well i don't think i knew how ridiculous this quote sounded until i just read it to myself NBC oh, give sports it to uh reporting brock purdy will start week one if he is ready to play football <laughs> when the season rolls around. Okay, okay. So, I mean, I guess that the news there is that, like, Purdy, if he's ready, he's the one. It's not currently being put out there that Lance can have that job. Yeah. That's I, the news. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's the belief. The belief of this sorry, reporter. Yes. And I, I think that that is most everybody's belief. I know uh, in the UDK, that's how we... George Kittle's belief? We statted it out, uh, you know. And, and they've come out and said that the team has said, like, He's earned the right to be the starter. It's unfortunate he got injured, but he and he did. He did earn that right. He just won a ton of games, played his excellent. Metric, his numbers, like downfield throwing in those games and, and on the move out of the pocket, they were like best in class, best in the league during that stretch. So I think it might be more overwhelming to them than it is to us. Yeah. How much he be. has that role. But that's the belief right now being reported. All right, Jason. I don't know if you can handle this one. Uh, Commanders head coach Ron Rivera. I mean, this makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. uh, he said Jacoby Brissett and Sam Howell are competing for the week one starting job. Uh, this is a wolf versus a cow uh, <laughs> fight for the week yeah, one starting where's job. Where's the beef brisket? Hey, where's the beef? <laughs> there we go. Yes, where's the beef? I'm on team brisket. Yeah, look, Jacoby Brissett is a better quarterback right now. Like, Jacoby Brissett can – Lead an offense. He did very well last year with the Cleveland Browns. He won games. He supported Amari Cooper. He, he, he is, like, if if your job right now for the Washington Commanders is, I want the best chance of winning week one, then I, it probably will be Brissett. I, I believe that Brissett's ceiling is just not anywhere near where you need it to be. We We also know what he isn't and he isn't it's um, not the moon yeah it's not the moon you're you're looking for you know maybe dunking on a 10-foot hoop you know that people can do that uh that's Jacoby Brissett and you know he can move the offense he can support you enough but you're not you're probably not getting to the playoffs with him and so I think that the chance there where you say okay Sam Howell has some gifts that Brissett doesn't have he's I think more mobile, more uh, has a has a better arm, and if you can develop that, maybe you can actually do something a little bit more special. So that I mean, that's always the gamble Last for all year, these. Last year, for the first eleven games, Cleveland and Mister Beef Brisket himself, second most plays per game, twenty four points per game. Amari Cooper was a revelation. Are you rooting for one or the other for McLaurin? Oh. Are you rooting for one or the other for Dotson? I mean, I know McLaurin is kind of your. Yeah, I, I'm still number one guy. I'm still rooting for Sam Howell here. I I mean, this is just a matter of talent evaluation. We haven't seen enough out of him to know whether or not Howell is very good. But I guess the way that I look at it is, if he's as good as I hope he can be, then he should be the week one star. I'd bet my life that both these guys play this year. I have him statted out to split. I mean, so do I. And it's like this is what Washington does: twelve starting quarterbacks in five years, which is by far the most in the league like both of the if i'm ron rivera this is the most fatiguing tiring exercise i've been doing every single year do you think Howell starts week one or do you think it's percent mike i think it will be Howell. it's this quote is interesting to me simply because this is a complete 
180 from it is. everything that you we've know. heard over the offseason going into the draft. Like, we're not even – it's Sam Howell. We are confident that Sam Howell is our guy. I thought bringing in Jacoby Brissett, that's a fantastic football move, great backup. But Sam Howell, he's our guy. He's a, Well, they're competing to be the starting quarterback for – Week one, and the good news for Ron Rivera is he's not going to have to be concerned about this in 2024. Because he won't be there? He will not be there. All right, um, neither will either quarterback probably. Gus yeah, Edwards. They, they won't have to be concerned about it either. <laughs> Gus Edwards, Michael Thomas, both will be ready for training camp. Quick news there. Uh, Rashad White says he expects a lot of balls coming his way in the passing game. This was him speaking on Sirius XM. I expect that too. And yep. I, think, I think they're, they're – that's his, that's his fantasy value. Their offensive line – if healthy, will be a vast improvement over what we got last year. So whoever's running the football, having opportunities in the backfield, that will be better. I don't know if it'll be good, but last year was kind of terrible. Um, and then one more piece of news. This one's interesting. The Vikings offensive coordinator, Wes Phillips, on whether Ty Chandler, who we've talked about, he's part of the, the – Second-year running back for the Vikings. Yeah, part of the depth chart there in, in Minnesota with the Dalvin Cook situation hanging over their heads. On When he was asked whether Ty Chandler was ready for an increased role, the quote he said was, I think he's going to have to be, which means Madison Chandler yep. should be what is on the way. Um, Dalvin Cook's still a Viking. Yeah, that's that, that's the, the biggest thing on here. Like – this uh, Ty Chandler is who we've talked about. Oh goodness! Like week sixteen, week seventeen of last year, when you're doing that, when you're starting to scan ahead on your dynasty waiver wire of someone who can just skyrocket in value, Ty Chandler was one of those players that we highlighted. Of you need to pick him up just in case the Vikings move on from Dalvin Cook. And it, what like what is going on? What is going on in Minnesota with Dalvin Cook that? Even the, the offensive coordinator is talking about Ty Chandler, who, if Dalvin Cook is there, Ty Chandler is just at the back of a of the depth chart, probably getting 10 touches this year. Why are you talking about, well, he, he's going to have to be ready. Make your move. Do something. Get your team ready. Yeah, but I enjoy watching <laughs> you. All right, uh, let's let's move forward here, take a quick break, and then we'll get into our wild cards. Uh, breaking did, did news. Did it happen? No. Is Dalvin gonna, gone? Breaking news. He is still a Minnesota Viking. Oh, man. Viking. Take actually, another break. He just uh, he just bought a new house <laughs> in Minnesota. Well, I hear it, it's lovely in the summertime. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get to it. No, I'm saying, no, the brakes. Guys, why are the brakes working? Because I cut the brakes. Wild card. I enjoy that very much. Yeah, I think uh, I think the judge enjoys it very much as well. Oh, yeah. Well, always sunny in there. Oh, by the way, the, the verdict is in. The Rap Scallion has arrived. Oh, oh, we're going with it. We're, we're going, going with the Rap Scallion. Oh, oh what yeah. a Rap! You good with that, J Rap? I mean, let's let's find out. Get on the mic. Yeah, it works. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he did tell me earlier today. It's not the. I mean, come on. It's not the first time he's been called the Rap Scallion. That makes sense. I mean, his name is Rap. It's it's the beginning of that word. But um, I think that that was the the runaway hit. It's fantastic. Look, Rap Scallion. It's good. It's fun. Should he mess up, Crap Scallion is right there for us. Oh, boy. Thank you, Mike. Oh, boy. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> All right. Do, now, you still, now, do you still like your name? I don't like it quite as much. <laughs> <laughs> it was better about five seconds ago. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I'm really happy right now. <laughs> don't screw up, buddy. Um, all right. Wild cards. What are we talking about? Players with a wide, big range of outcomes. Uh, there are a handful of these guys that. Look, you bet on them, you get it right, they could be keys to a championship run. Uh, it's all going to be about cost, confidence that we have, that you have in these players to have a um, a wild card season that ends up on the uh, on the good side. But it could go two totally different directions. Um, Tua Tungavailoa is yeah. the first name I'm going to throw out there. 
And, you know, you, you, I think there was some news this morning. Uh, it seems so unnecessary because of how good he was last year. But it was uh, Mike McDaniel coming out and saying Tyreek Hill is so far ahead of where he was last offseason. It was like, wait, you can't be better than you were last year. But just knowing the offense, like the capability of the Miami offense, they could be the best offense in football. That is the – Yes. That could, they could average the most points per game. They could be the most uh, electric. And so you, you can't do that unless Tua puts up an incredible season. Could you what, imagine an NFL-wide relay race? Where every team grabs four oh, guys. Yeah. And oh yeah. Oh like yeah. Miami's oh, gone. Oh yeah. What? What you got? Uh, you, between, Tyreek runs the anchor, right? And then <laughs> Mostert's in it. Uh, and Waddle. Yeah, and, and Waddle and A Chain. Yeah. Oh, baby. I mean, Dad, they're gone. So, so you can't. <laughs> this is the equation here for Tua: is you can't have. They can be the best offense in football, and you can't be the best offense in football and have your quarterback not making a big impact in fantasy. And we saw it in stretches last year. And so, um, you know, led the league in yards per attempt, passing yards on play action, um, highest touchdown rate in the NFL, had a six touchdown week. So you even see it in a, like a single week, his ability to be the best quarterback fantasy wise. Um, and I, there were parts of last year that fantasy players leaned on him to be their starter. And so that's the, that is in the range of outcomes. Like I see him in drafts. Now we go through a best ball draft. And you're like, do I take him now? When do I, you know, especially in basketball where you're like, oh, you might be able to throw out some of those injury games. Like if you told me to a tongue of Iloa right now, or I'll throw it to you. If, if, if I told you that he's a guarantee for 17 weeks, how does that change the equation for where you might rank him? Because well, he's a player that I think is fairly underranked due to the injury situation. Yeah, I mean, I I really like to uh, the the you know I've got him statted out for seventeen um, weeks. So the the risk when you're making that pick is certainly high, but I I think Tua could easily be you know the uh, a top eight quarterback with the weapons he has. When I'm at his ADP, I've I've oftentimes selected him to be my quarterback in best ball. The, He's the, being drafted outside the top 10 right now. He was ninth most fantasy points per game last year. Mike and I have him at 11 in our rankings. Like I'm I'm in, I'm very interested in Tua. I think he's a perfect wild card to talk about cuz you had that stretch yeah week 2 where he was dominant. He followed that up with a game against Buffalo where he finished out he has finished as quarterback 25 despite playing 93% of the snaps. Then he has the the first big uh, injury, comes back for an entire month, is tearing it up, being a top five quarterback, a top four it quarterback. It was awesome. It was in, so fun. In three straight weeks, misses another game to injury, and then here's where he becomes the wild card because he comes back and he's from week 12 through 16. So you have five games, doesn't pass 20 points at all in that time period. He gets over... 16 points just one time and it's was that uh was that a scenario that was that happened because of the the concussions that he had sustained throughout the season it we don't know exactly what happened or is it just like he he had a stretch run in the middle where it was just he happened to be on fire in that in that range and then he but then he got exposed and defenses figured out this is how we stopped the Miami Dolphins offense because we we're gonna make Tua do certain things that he can't actually do. That's that's all up in the air. It's all uh, part of the wild card equation yes, for exactly. Tua. Is you didn't have a long enough stretch, a healthy enough stretch, to 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 conclusively come in here and, and plant your flag and say, oh, he's gonna be better than Lamar. Like I mean, there there was a world where you could have said that the stretch runs longer, he doesn't get hurt. Yeah, for for sure. And and it's a little bit narrative based with the concussion stuff. So I don't like. Uh, you know, I don't like uh, betting on this thought process. I don't include it in like my probabilities. But just when I watched the beginning of the year, this was a sharp quarterback. And when he came back after some of those injuries, it, it didn't look to me on film like that's a good word for it. It didn't look to me as if NFL defenses figured him out. He looked off. He missed some passes that, that, that he was not you know just, just accuracy wise exactly. right in the 50s or yeah something. in in that stretch period once he came back and just, things weren't 
fantastic. He's still putting up yardage. He still has an okay touchdown rate, but he was completing. Uh, I'm not even gonna hit the button because it was. It's not great, but it's he was 55. completing. Yeah, 55 percent of your passes and completing 55 percent of your passes as a professional quarterback is not a route to success. Uh, certainly when you have Jalen Waddle and Tyree Kill as options in the passing game, you should be completing a lot more than that. So yep. uh, that's uh, my first wild card. Who do you got, Jay? I'm going to go with a running back here, a running back out of Los Angeles named Cameron Akers. Uh, Cam Akers, huge wild card. In fact, if you look at last year, he was a huge wild card because there was a point in time where it was like, he's never going to play another snap of football for the Rams. He, yep. he, we, the, they were on the outs. I, we don't know the details of what happened, but it was like the, him and McVay, maybe, I don't know, did they start fighting? Did he, you know, do something bad to him? And then it was like, just like, well, you're out. You're off the team. you called him a duty head. Yeah, something like that had to have happened. Or maybe or. Sean McVay called him Cameron Akers, Ooh. which is not his birth name. Oh, so I'm, I need well, to step in there. Yeah, Interesting. So yeah, just went straight Cam. Just Re Cam. Really? Yeah, just Cam. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Go on. Feel like I, you know, could have been better. You, <laughs> you know, if you name him Cameron, you you could still call him Cam. But um, regardless, <laughs> you're really limiting your options because <laughs> yeah. you can shorten, now, but you you can't add on to it. I, I was just told I'm not allowed to call him Cameron. Because that's not his name. Like I can't, I can't go. Hey, uh, Jasonathu. Right. Like I can't do that. No. You but if you I was could. named Jasonathu, I could call you Jason. Absolutely. I could call what you a short, Jay. cute nickname for me, Mike. A biblical <laughs> name like Jasonathu. <laughs> um, so Cam, Cam Akers is someone. Obviously, right now he's being drafted twenty third running back off the off the board. Not someone that people are expecting huge things from. There is a lot of risk here. The Rams' offense was putrid and, and kind of fell apart. But I think his range of outcomes, if you want to talk about a guy who is, um, you know, obviously not in the top 20 running backs being drafted, who has a chance to be really good, like league winning good, to me, that's Cam Akers. And, and you saw it last year for a six game stretch at the end of the year. Uh, during the, that six game stretch, he played 70 plus percent of Los Angeles of their Rams offensive snaps. That is an absurd number. Only four running backs hit that mark last season. Uh, Dalvin Cook, Saquon Barkley, CMC, and Josh Jacobs. Uh, I mean, over the last five years, you look at running backs with 70 plus percent of their snaps, and all of them are top 20 backs. And ninety percent of them are running back ones, and then you go, well, yeah, but they, you know, they just had to rely on him because there was injuries, blah blah blah. Look at the depth chart; it's Cameron Akers. <laughs> oh no, 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 yeah, no, no. new nickname. <laughs> <laughs> That's not okay. Cam You're breaking all sorts of laws of the universe. Cam. Quote, Cameron Akers. No. The, yeah. The first elongated <laughs> nickname he has on record. So anyways, anyways, Cam Cameron Akers. Um, Cam Cam. Cam Cam. Uh, at the end of last year, he was extremely good. You're talking points per game. This might surprise you, but points per game during that stretch of the final six weeks, he was ahead of Derrick Henry. He was ahead of Saquon Barkley. He was ahead of Tony Pollard. He was ahead of Josh Jacobs. And those guys weren't bad during the final six games at all. He was just awesome. He was the running back four over that time period. So we know that he's got the the talent, uh, the opportunity, the depth chart to receive that. And then you think, well, what if this offense is better? It's still Sean McVay. The, Matthew Stafford being back and healthy isn't going to hurt Cam Akers. So to me, he's worth the gamble at where he's going because I, you know, and and on the flip side. Him and Sean McVay could be on the outs again, well, and he could get doghoused away, and you know, Kyron Williams becomes something. Well, yeah. Anytime you have a previous season that included actively being tried, like they tried to get rid of him, mm -hmm. that makes him a wild card. Because do you, do you trust? Like Sean McVay came out. I mentioned it earlier this off season. He said, "We're expecting Cam Akers to build on how he finished the season." Beautiful. But I would argue they were expecting Cam Akers to do something different than he did to start the season last year. So I think the range of outcomes makes him very scary. But when you look at ADP, like we talked about earlier, and you look at Cam Akers, and I'm, I'm looking at my rankings and I'm saying, well, I'm going to have to choose between Cam Akers or Antonio Gibson. I'm going to choose Antonio, uh, Cam Akers 
or Rashad White. It's like really hard not to go for the guy that could be the workhorse. Right. Like Gibson agreed. won't be that. Like there's no universe where outside of catastrophic injury that Gibson gets that chance again. And if Mc you had to bet McKinnon. If you I had mean, to bet like between the Buccaneers offense recovering from last year or the Rams offense recovering. Yeah, you have a you have an inverse situation there. Yeah. You got Matthew Stafford returning and Brady leaving. So um yeah, I mean definition of a wild card and and, a, and the kind like you said that can actually you know, running backs are hard to come by. If you find one late, you've stolen, right? And so I um, believe the number one running back to uh help people win championships last year was Josh Jacobs. And he was basically this slot. He was going around the same spot. Because when you can find a guy in those middle rounds that goes nuclear and is a top five back, you you win championships. Mike, give us a wild card. Cut those breaks. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to talk about Drake London, wide receiver of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I'm going to save my uh, other wild card for it to close it down because I think that he is like the biggest wild card yet that we haven't talked about over this offseason. But Drake London last year was incredible. You know, amazing draft capital comes out as a rookie and puts up truly high level elite numbers. 27% of his routes, he earned a target. And it, it, so his targets per route run number, 27%, that's outrageously high. His yards per route run, over two, that's outrageously high. And his target share by the end of the year, 29%. That's like Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, A.J. Brown. That's that level of a target share uh, in, the, in the Atlanta passing offense. But we know that Atlanta likes to run. They just invested... Uh, a very high first round pick, uh, pick into Bijan Robinson, telling us with their actions that they want to establish the run, and yet you have Drake London, who is looks like he can be a true elite wide receiver in the NFL, but will he get enough volume? So we looked back, you know, on on uh, offenses that had low volume. So the best wide receivers on teams that had a Bottom five pass rate over expectation since 2019. Those wide receivers averaged 95 targets. None of them went over 120. And aside from you have guys like A.J. Brown who broke the mold when he was in Tennessee. Low if it, uh, low pass volume, high efficiency comes out for – it's good for fantasy football. But the average finish for these guys, wide receiver 35. Now, we all have Drake London ranked higher than that. Do I? We, yeah, you have him 30. at 30 currently. Yeah. Uh, so you do have him higher than that, but you have him ranked much lower than ADP. Myself and Jason have, have him ranked right around his ADP, and it's so hard because when I'm playing fantasy football, talent wins. Talent wins in the NFL. But what does it look like this year? Cause it, I, and you had the Kyle Pitts injury as well, but up until the Kyle Pitts injury, Drake London was still seeing 27% of the targets so he was still really, really involved. But again, that that the target share, when they're poor targets, which we don't know if the Desmond Ritter targets are going to be any better than the Marcus Mariota targets, there's a there's a chance that there, it's a lateral move. And that we see exactly the same thing from, uh, from a completion percentage for the Atlanta Falcons. But Drake London is just so, so good. He's so big. I think he proved uh, all doubters wrong of, like, watch him run routes. The guy gets open. This isn't just a big-bodied wide receiver who wins at contested catches. No, he can do that, and he can get open on out routes and and deep routes. It's, he's he's so good. It, it's so frustrating. Well, and it, it is a – I think it's a point against Drake London that the thing we have to point at is – these targets per out run yards per yes per out target share because you can't look at production like he put these numbers up which were historic and yet you had what like four good games on the season so mm -hmm. so it shows you that you can put historically Jamar Chase Jefferson AJ Brown numbers together in the target department and it can still equate to horrible disappointment in fantasy that's a possible wild card outcome there yeah I mean it was just like Mike said he had a 27 percent target share 
uh, through through those first eleven weeks when Kyle Pitts was there, that's a great number. Yes, but his seventeen game pace, just so you know, like it, it, in the actual counting stats that help you in fantasy football, he that was only a ninety seven target pace. And so, Bijan's going to get about I don't know. He'll get seventy five to hundred. He'll get a bunch of targets, and yeah, it's the, so tough. And the so the behind the scene metrics are fantastic. The production's not great, but seventy three for eight hundred. It nearly 870 yards and five touchdowns in 16 games played for a rookie wide receiver. Those are good numbers. Those are numbers that someone should build upon and and go into next year and have a fantastic season. But we just we can't trust what uh, Arthur's plan is is going to turn into a a huge season for Drake London. Andy, do you think do you think Drake London is a great wide receiver? Like, well, I, I haven't I heard your genuine thought of him I as he, a... I think he's capable of, of holding down the number one job on a team. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I, I don't know if that's... Does that answer the question? Yeah, it says you think he's okay. Um, To me. That's how I take that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we had so little opportunity to see... I mean, you, you had no consistency. It's very tough. I mean, I think he's a good wide receiver, yeah. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think. I don't think he's Darnell Mooney when he was about to inherit a number one role. I think he's better than that. I think he's he's capable in the right offense. If we were talking about Aaron Rodgers arriving and them changing to a passing offense, we'd be talking about Drake London the same way we're talking about Garrett Wilson. So, I think he's that. I think he's almost to that level. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're gonna do a rapid round for a second set of wild card names before we do best ball breakdown. Dalton Kincaid is is a wild card to me. Dalton Kincaid, yeah. rookie tight end slash slot receiver. Does that chuckle from you, Jason? Say he's not a wild card for you. Uh, it, it's a he's so into him he wouldn't even put him as a wild card. Jason just wants him. Um, uh, no, closer to the opposite. But it's just he, he makes me chuckle because of what the fantasy community is going to do over however it goes. Like what whatever happens on his wild card season, you're going to have some victory laps <laughs> galore. It's, it is. It's not as intense obviously because uh Kyle Pitts was a top whatever top five pick in the NFL draft but it it has there are there are some resemblances of the pre-Kyle Pitts era that are going on with Dalton Kincaid of you know, people freaking out about every mention of him and anytime Buffalo mentions his name you're like huh huh what, what how are they gonna use him what slot okay look Joker okay it, it's an exciting proposition because of what it's attached to. Dalton Kincaid arriving in Atlanta is not the same conversation. He's not a top five pick. Him arriving to a team that had a, a, a abject void beyond Stephon Diggs is what makes him a wild card. Yep. You have you have their general manager Brandon Bean coming out and talking about you know putting him out into the slot, something that they wouldn't do as much with Dawson Knox. He led the entire. Um, NCAA and slot wide receiver tight end hybrid snaps. This is a capable athlete. And I know we have a history of rookie tight ends, but I, I do struggle with that kind of sample because we don't have, we don't have a, a, a 20 year sample of players being added to a top five offense playing slot. We don't have, you know, that type of tight end arriving to the NFL level very often. So do I think he can be like, what's his range of outcomes? Like he's he's a top seven tight end if things go right. That doesn't mean look, look Kyle Pitts. It was like he's going to break the game. He's going to be a top two Kyle tight Pitts end. Kyle Pitts had a thousand yards. Yeah. yeah, he did. He scored once, right? I don't was remember. it once or twice. It was brutal. Once, well, yeah, once, one yeah. So the the potential is what makes him a wild card because you're going to like I've met thirteen. Somehow Mike has him lower than Jason, unless that's misprint. That's probably a misprint. It might be. I don't know. Jason's probably. It says seventeen. That might be seventy-seven. But that might be two seven. So here's the question. Seems right. Here's the question for Dalton Kincaid at tight end eleven. Like it's it, that can't be that bad. I mean, you're if you're drafting the eleventh tight end off the board, you are not investing very much into him. Uh, what, that, what that's the his, underdog. I wonder ADP. what is. Yeah, that underdog ADP is going to be higher than his redraft ADP for sure. For, and, for on sure. sleeper right now, he's fifteen. Yeah, so so that's to me, like why not? Yeah, and that that's what makes him so kind of exciting. I think is if you did draft the slot, if you drafted the number two target, if in Buffalo you stole, sure, and that's, that's a, it. That's it, the only walk. I mean, it, 
Right now in redraft, he's in the 13th round. So, you know, he, he doesn't, he's not costing you anything for the chance, for the shot to take. In, in underdog, I get the maybe rebellion from the hype because it's probably overextended. You said 13th round in redraft. He's probably a top 12 tight end in underdog. Yeah, he's the uh, tight end 11 right now in underdog. And do, do you think that's stupid? Yeah, I think that's very stupid you don't think the underdog gamble i mean we're going to talk about best ball in a minute but like when you look at players that i, I think there's you're a, probably taking them over in joku you're probably taking them over everett you're probably taking them over yeah i mean he's he's going ahead of some of those players he's definitely going ahead of of everett but you know it's it dawson knox is someone you can grab at the very end of a draft who might end up with just more touchdowns this season on the yeah, same team that's fair all right Give me your uh, your second one. All right, I'll give gentlemen. you my second uh, blitzed wild card. It was a wild card selection on this show last year. <laughs> I was going to say, this, is, this feels like hey, permanent wild card. This is he stay is, wild. He is the permanent wild card, but it's no longer New York Giants wide receiver Kadarius Toney. It is Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Kadarius Toney. The guy has been awesome when he has been running routes on the field. The guy has not been running routes on the field <laughs> very much. Um, you know, it was, it was one of those things when he was in New York, it was mostly injury. Then he goes to the Chiefs, still dealt with uh, more injuries, but it seemed like he got healthy and still didn't play that much. Um, when he was there, though, he it was another one of those, you know, you're, you're talking percentage things. He was targeted... Um, so far in his career, 25.8% of his routes. That's very good. That's very For context, here are the only players Can last year. Can I get year. an order of routes, please? <laughs> yes. Can exactly. you give me a double-sized order of routes? Give me more routes. Here are the players who hit that mark in 2022. Stephon Diggs, Justin Jefferson, Hopkins, Lamb, Olave, Devontae Adams, Drake London, Cooper Cup, Am uh, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Tyreek Hill. It's like it's nonstop studs, and then there's Kadarius Toney, who just hasn't been able to be on the field. So if you're telling me that he ends up winning the more permanent job, you know, we don't know. Is it Sky Moore? Um, is it Rasheed Rice? Does Hopkins show up? You know, who 25 Chiefs targets in eight, in eight games. Whew. Yeah, I mean, even in the Super Bowl, in the Super Bowl, he was barely used. So, uh, 11 25 targets, so 100, 100 runs. <laughs> so, uh, I mean... 11 total snaps in the Super Bowl. Yep. Snaps. Yep. And yet he caught a touchdown and had a 65-yard punt return, made a huge impact Sky on that Moore game. Sky got a almost, touchdown. That almost feels more corollary to that stat because when he's there and he's out, it's like a design play for Kadarius Tony right now in Kansas City. Sure, it might, like it might Andy be. Andy Reid's like, you're there. You're playing 11 snaps, so when you're there, it's probably drawn up for you. So and, it's one of those things where is he going to inherit the McCall Hardman role and he's just a gadget guy? That's in his range right, of outcomes. Right, right. Does he inherit the snaps and routes of Juju? Because if he does and he gets those targets, he's one of the rare athletes that could do special things with Mahomes. Agreed. All right, Mike, close us down with the wild All cards right. before we get into best ball breakdown. I am very excited to talk about Brandon Cooks, who is now on the Dallas Cowboys. He will be turning 30. He is, he's uh, been in the NFL for quite some time, played back in 2014. But he's kind of been... He's been, you know, a little bit buried on the Houston Texans the last three seasons. Last year was, in particularly, bad. Uh, finishing as the wide receiver forty nine in thirteen games, things were bad. You know, there was like some bad blood going on in social media with Brandon Cooks and the team. Things just were clearly not great. But you look back and uh, so you had last year that was terrible. That's it. That's like that's basically the only time that Brandon Cooks has been bad. In 2019, he had uh, uh, a year that was shortened with the, with the Rams. He only showed up in 14 games and had a not-so-great year then. But other than that, he's a top-20 wide receiver. And the question is, like, is Brandon Cooks still good? And the Dallas Cowboys think that he is. They brought him in. And, okay, so the question of is he good, is he okay? But either way... He's going to be the number two option for the Dallas Cowboys. You have CeeDee Lamb, who's locked in. Great wide receiver. But beyond that, what do you have? Looking at the Dallas Cowboys play last year, you, you saw, you're like, 
man, this team really, really, really needs Michael um, Gallup. They need another wide receiver who can do things for this offense. I think that a lot of the struggles that Dak had, uh, especially with turnovers and things, had to do with the rest of his wide receiver core could not get it done behind CeeDee Lamb. And, and Dalton Schultz, the doctor, who's kind of a reliable guy, he's now gone. Are they going to find that with Jake Ferguson or the Schoon Man coming in as their as a second round pick? That's TBD. But Brandon Cooks, I think he's still good. We just had, you know, speaking of hype, there was a little bit we, today. There was we had more hype today from saying that that Brandon Cooks just torched double coverage and Dak. Threw I believe a, the quote said, "Wild card Brandon Cooks just torched <laughs> coverage." Sure, torched double coverage for a perfect sixty yard strike from Dak Prescott, who Dak Prescott historically been a very accurate quarterback. So, like, if Brandon Cooks really has anything left, I think that he is a screaming value right now in fantasy football. Rankings-wise, you're on Cook's Island. Yes, I am. Like, I, and I didn't realize it. Um, I didn't either. I do think that part of the wild card built in is, all, I mean, there's been plenty of hype about Michael Gallup being back in form after the injury. It takes a year to get what back. Is, what is the form, though? The form is, the, the, did you see the check they gave him? Yeah, I was going to say the form is what they paid him to come back to be. They, they said, buy Amari Cooper. We're going to pay Michael Gallup instead. Sure. And yeah, I mean. Cowboys uh handing out really good checks i mean like they paid zeke a lot of money and then they were like eh, you're gonna need to get out of here five they paid year Amari 57 Cooper. million dollar contract they gave after the acl injury. how much is was guaranteed uh it was 57 27 million okay. guarantee 27 versus 57 very different but like they gave a million signing they bonus. gave Amari cooper 100 million dollars or whatever it was and they're like yeah eh, you're gonna have to get out of I'm here i'm not saying you're wrong but i'm just saying that that's one of the i'm trying to find the way that it goes wrong Right, and, and and you guys have uh, Brandon Cooks ranked more like his ADP is. It just it kind of dawned on me the other day, and I was talking in the office to Jason. I'm like, is Brandon Cooks still good? Right. Be because if the answer to that is, yeah, he's still it, – it, it doesn't even have to be, oh, yeah, he's still Brandon Cooks. It can be, yes, Brandon Cooks is still pretty good. Wide receiver 14, 9, 12, 13, 15, and 20. Those are six seasons in which he was a top – 20 wide receiver. And I know th there's a lot to be said about what is the identity of the Dallas Cowboys offense, Mike McCarthy and his 1960s version of the NFL that might be coming in. But they were playing with the lead last year and still throwing the ball. And So after Dak returned from injury, they were third in total yards, 10th in passing yards per game, 5th in expected points per pass attempt. Like They were tremendous, and they were, they were cooking. And it, so I think it's wild here of we have the wide receiver too – who has historically been great for fantasy football, has top notch speed, doesn't have to be the number one. Like that that's another great thing for me in Brandon Cook's corner is CeeDee Lamb gets to be the number one guy and Brandon Cooks gets to be the alternate. Like that's that's incredible for a guy who's gonna turn thirty. Yeah, and the cost is nothing. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Well, every week we have a Best Ball Breakdown here, presented by Underdog, a new segment leading up into the season. Go ahead and hit the button. I say it's it's short and sweet today. Nasty. Talk we about nasty boys. are talking about some nasty boys. Your favorite last round pick in Best Ball. These are important for a number of reasons. One, if you hit them, they obviously set you apart. And two, this is where you can differentiate lineups. Not everybody is draft. You know, when you look at guys with the ADPs, you know, over two hundred, they're they're not drafted in in as many leagues. Um, you know, for example, last year Geno Smith was only drafted in two point six percent of rosters, and That's he ended up even being, being drafted. Yeah, just yeah. just being drafted, and he ended up being a top ten overall player in advance rate. So you success, know, yeah. yeah. Diamonds in the rough. Give them to me. I'm going to give you my three favorites. They, these are just the guys I have personally been drafting the most with my last round pick. The first, a former first round <laughs> running back playing on <laughs> oh, the highest powered offense we in have, the league. We have to laugh so we don't cry. Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Um, last oh. year, my number one drafted guy was Jarek McKinnon in the last round. And it was like, well, look, there's an opportunity. He gets on the field more than you think on a great offense. I'm just going to take the shot. Take the shot. Clyde yeah. edwards Alaire. I think there's – I mean, so look. what? Who cares? So what? Who cares? You take a shot with your last pick. My second one, 
former first round NFL <laughs> draft pick who has been pretty good in his career, just uh, not great. Top ten, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it was like top five or something. He was the number five. Number five. Oh my gosh, Corey Davis. <laughs> Corey Davis of the New York Jets. So do you do you actually whoops, vomit a little when you make your doozle. last picks? No, I like these guys. <laughs> no, you I, don't. I do too. <laughs> I, I'm like I'm happy when I can grab these three players. These three players, I think, in the last round are going to actually score fantasy points. Most of the guys that you're drafting in the last round, they're not they're not going to. But your your third name is my favorite one. My third name is not a first round pick. Not a first-round pick, but he was an NFL draft pick this year. He is a rookie wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, Michael Wilson. Michael Wilson is a name that in the draft process, if you were a dynasty player, you didn't hear about him before the NFL draft. So he gets no hype. He is undrafted. I mean, you want to talk about a player who's going to be drafted in less than 1% of best ball leagues and you want to make a differentiation? Michael Wilson is an actually really talented wide receiver who in college didn't get to play that much, but he inherits a, a spot now that Hopkins is gone where he could, he's just got to beat out Zach Pascal. And then if he does, he could be an almost every snap player in two he, wide receiver you, sets. You, okay, so I was going to say, where are you projecting he's going to be part of this offense? Because it's Hollywood Brown's locked in. He's, yep, he's, he's the, the number one. one guy. I think that Rondale Moore has is locked into his starting spot. And then I would put the third wide receiver as uh, as Greg Dortch. So I see Rondell I Moore. Those two guys are going to be outside. Yeah, I, exactly. I see that's, Rondell yeah, so Moore and, and the Dortch in the slot. Yep. And okay. so uh, that's where I see Michael Wilson with an opportunity to be on the outside. And then if Kyler ends up coming back earlier than we think, now all of a sudden you've got a decent opportunity, a decent talent, and a decent uh, quarterback. I, I'm with you. So I, I think the, f the fact of the matter is, is this is a new general manager. This is his pick. Yeah. Like this is a new regime. This is and, and this is a, a lost season most likely for Arizona. So reps for Michael Wilson are more valuable than yeah, reps could for some be. of these guys potentially. So uh, Mike, what are your uh Sure. nasty boys? So I just want to throw out a a couple of guys like the Williams twins. Yeah, yeah, a couple of Williams here. And look, backup running backs over the the course of the season, they gain value. That's why the zero running back strategy works. And I was looking through the the underdog ADP and it's kind of surprising to me that these two players are available at the very end very late because at this point of the season you aren't you're not a hundred percent confident who truly is the backup running back for teams that, that can fluctuate that can change it can change uh when an injury happens to a starter the player you thought was the backup doesn't go into the the 1a role those types of things happen but with the information that we have right now Travion Williams of the Cincinnati Bengals has been talked up a lot. And you're looking at their their depth chart right now. Joe Mixon is in front. Samaj P. Ryan, who was on the field a ton, especially in third down, uh, working as a pass catcher, he's gone. And and Travion Williams, the, at least the way that they are talking about him right now, he seems to be the most likely player to fill into that Samaj P. Ryan role and actually get on the field. And on top of that, you just have the upside like Joe Mixon is here we are he's still not a lock to be on this this roster we think he will be at this point but it's that is still not a lock uh some legal things are still being figured out and then the the backup to Jason's wild card is Kyron Williams who uh he was a rookie this past year for the Los Angeles Rams week one it comes out uh I think it was like right before or right after the game that Kyron Williams is actually going to be a huge part of this rushing attack. In week one, they played it really close to the vest. They didn't let that leak out. Unfortunately, Kyron Williams, because he was a rookie, was on special teams, and he got a high ankle sprain, and then his season essentially got torched. So you have Cam Akers, who is – or I'm sorry, Cameron Akers. Thank oh, you. Oh, gosh, Thank don't you. do it. Oh, <laughs> update, I have uh, – we, we have added Cameron as a nickname <laughs> to our database. I did it already mid-show. <laughs> So, so we have we have Mr. Cameron Akers, uh, who is is he really a lock to be the starting running back? That is it's up in the air with everything that happened last year, and this team seems to really like Kyron Williams. So there's we, you and I did too. Oh yeah, coming yeah. into the league, yes, the, he was on tape production wise a fantastic running back. Believe out of Notre Dame, 
tanks the combine like no player has ever tanked it before. He put like lead weights in the shoes. <laughs> yeah, like uh, maybe Carmen didn't know you don't have to wear the the the, the weighted vest, vest yeah. while you're doing the forty. Yeah. Bold choice for him to do it that way, <laughs> to just kind of show off. But he, uh, as far as we know right now, is the backup and could be featured heavily in their plans. We just don't know. And to be available at that range of a best ball draft when you don't have to decide when to put him in or not, let me, is I think he's a good pick. Let me circle back to Travion. Because okay. I, I think that there's a – like it just doesn't make sense for what this team has gone through with Joe Mixon for losing Samaj P. Ryan to somehow commit more to Joe Mixon. It doesn't make sense. Like they don't have at a minimum, even if you think he's clear of whatever legal repercussions have transpired in the past. Sure. There is the possibility of those things happening in the future because of having multiple issues. I'm just saying from a team that wants to compete for a Super Bowl, you either have tremendous confidence in Travion Williams or it, and the depth, or you are going to add a body. But I don't think any of the outcomes is like, you know what? We lost a crucial piece of our Super Bowl run and a crucial piece of our success last year in Samaj P. Ryan, and we're cool with that. Yeah, and like they, I don't think that that makes sense. I'm I'm in total agreement that they did add Chase Brown in the draft. I think he was a fifth rounder or something. That's so correct. so not. And Travion Williams is very much feels like uh, Eno Benjamin for the Arizona Cardinals. Just F, so year. Travion Williams, if you do not recall, had a monster production profile, ton, like in college. In college, in college, yeah. And then you know gets absolutely buried in the draft, and yet they keep bringing him back to be right. on this roster. So he's he's doing something right I, to impress the team. I think it's I stated I stated Chase Brown for more. My point is more the Bengals. The Bengals have to have some kind of confidence beyond Mixon. Yeah, I love Chase Brown. That's that's where I would put. All of my chips. I'm not in on Travion just because th we've seen him for four years. He's been sure, with right, this team, right. and he's had opportunities, right? Yep. Joe Mixon missed games last year, and in weeks 12 and 13 when, when Travion was active and Joe Mixon wasn't, uh, he had two for 18 and one for three. Like I think the point of Mike's, like looking at the backup, though, if it's Chase Brown for you, it's Chase Brown to yeah, the argument. Exactly. It's like go target the backup with opportunity on a great team. But I'm, and, and for this segment in particular it's a player who you can get with your last pick you can't get chase brown with your last pick he's he's very very late i was gonna but, say where's he going uh, about 15th round uh adp 179 all right uh that would be the chase round right uh, apparently uh that was best ball breakdown presented by underdog fantasy get your first deposit matched up to a hundred dollars using the code ballers that is it for today's episode of the show We've got an ADP price check episode coming up, a footballer's AMA, and a whole lot more. Maybe even some Hopkins news around the corner. We'll Maybe. find out. Or Dalvin Cook. Who knows? Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.